Yeah, I got myself a little selfie stick now. Hey, what's up, my friend? Hey. <laughs> so as you know, Edson's been around for a long time. I've known him for, my God, like a decade now, Edson. Yes. <laughs> you know, it's a been a long time. So, and Edson's been, always been a great guy, man. He's, uh, you know, he works hard. He's loyal. I see him in the room every day. And so we need to have someone like Edson to help moderate the room. So the announcement today is actually, you know, we wanted to introduce the newest moderator to the My Investing Club room. It's Edson right here. So, and I, I really appreciate him helping. It's a, it's not a glorious job, man. It, it's a very, you know, he needs a lot of patience. And Edson has a lot of patience, something I lack. So you want to introduce yourself, Edson, to everybody? Yes, uh, well, most of the people know me. For the ones that I don't know yet or haven't talked yet, I've been around for a good decade. And uh, we're going back to the, you know, Sykes and IU and all this other stuff. And we've been around long enough to know all these people, all the crappy ones, uh, the, you know, the little, little league. They have a, you know, the inner circle, all this kind of crap stuff. But we do, <laughs> yeah. every day, we do our things, small things every day. We're not running for the fence, not shooting for the fences anymore. We just like, you know, thousand, yeah. dollars, thousand of dollars a day, three thousand dollars a day. That's all we do. That's all, right? That's all. <laughs> like thousand, thousand days anymore. <laughs> but um, you know what? Edson, Edson's been around. He's very experienced. He's seen all of the pumps and dumps, and he knows what's going on. So, you know, thank you, Edson, and uh, welcome to the team. And are you going to probably quit very soon when you, you realize it's actually very hard and <laughs> having all these guys ask questions? So uh, and we really appreciate you accepting the role. It's Like I said, it's not a glorious role. You know, it's actually, but you have to really love what you're doing, and Edson surely loves what he's doing. So I really appreciate it, man. I do. It's a pleasure. When it, not only when you're explain to somebody it's just that you learn too so, like you oh know. correct that's that's what I, I keep telling everybody it's like it's like a it's like if you teach someone it reinforces what you're trying to learn so why why not put your effort in right and yeah and do both so because you're doing it anyways that's so you're helping people already so that's all well, right yeah so we yeah. really we really appreciate that all right thank you man all right guys i'm gonna start my thing i'm gonna log out thanks that's it all right thank you Yeah, so any uh, so he's from uh, Brazil, right? So Portuguese and Spanish. So there we go. So you you have uh, native speakers in Spanish and Portuguese. Edson's your man. Thanks, Edson. So I want to I'm going to pretty much jump straight into it. Before we jump, I want to talk about the accelerator real quick. I don't want to talk about it too much. We always talk about this. We released this new course called the Accelerated Jumpstart. The intention is to speed up your learning curve. And we have a lot of people using it very effectively. So if you want to know more, text Tosh. Go to our Instagram page. You'll see all the testimonials. Those, I mean, we have testimonials every day. I just don't want to, I don't have time to post them all. So, but pretty much it, it works. That's all I can say. You know, don't take my word for it. Go and see what the members are saying. The members are here right now on Instagram live. So you can even ask them, you know, how, how do you guys like the course? Is everything's good, right? So. Thanks to Joe Kelly and the rest of the crew. You know, we beta tested this for six months. We made it in six months. So great job, guys. That's the Accelerator Jumpstart. So text Tosh for, for more information. We have, a, we have a promo, which will end pretty soon. The promo is pretty much you get it for free with an annual or lifetime membership. So, you know, it's, it's, it's crazy because I'm – Every day I'm hearing these guys talk about other services charging $7,500 for one year. What the fuck? Okay, I got his curse, but I just don't understand it. And so when people say we're expensive, I think that's what it is, man. People think we're too cheap, so they think it's not effective. When, when they, they, they think we're like the, the Hyundai Excels or something, right? <laughs> and, and, and someone pricing at $8,000 a year must be good. But you know what, man? We, we, we really don't want to freaking play that pricing game with these guys. We give the value. And as you see, man, you know, we're always innovating with new things. And we're giving out this, this course completely for free for the first month. After that, we're going to have to start charging. So don't, don't, don't get upset if, we, uh, if you have to start paying, if you don't pay now, right? So 
Um, no one values free stuff, so that's, that's all I'm going to say. Okay, guys. So what the hell happened today? Today, I, had, I came in with, you know, no FOMO, actually. I started the day great. Holy crap. I, I was nailing top ticking, pre-market. Everything was fucking good. And then Hertz, HTZ, HTZ tank. So what happened was this. I nailed that. I nailed it from top to bottom. And then I looked at my P&L and that was not enough. I'm like, what the fuck? I only made 5,000 bucks or what the hell it was, right? So I'm like, so stupid, right? It's like, here I am. The market just opened. It's only been two or five minutes since the market's opened. I'm up to $5,000, right? And I'm like, that's not enough. I fucked up. Why did I fucking triple my size? You know, it's just stupid. Why am I such a pussy? You know, then I'm hearing Alex is like in 30,000 shares short of DGLY, just stuff like that. And so what happens is this, guys. You will never be enough. It will never be enough. You make $100, you want to make $500. You make $500, you'll make $1,000. So here I am sitting on $5,000. Zero stress. Nailed my plan. On small size, too. It wasn't like anything big. Because this is tanked out of nowhere. Right? HTC is tanked out of nowhere. And then I'm like, holy crap. So I'm sitting there thinking, please bounce. Please bounce. If it bounces, I'm going to load up. That is the banking mentality that have basically crippled many traders, including myself, right, in the past. When you come into the day thinking, holy crap, I want to bank. What happens is this. You force yourself subconsciously to get into that stock big too early. So that's what happened. So what happened was, okay, I'm waiting for that stock to bounce. And, dude, it was fucking crazy. And so I got away with it, right? I got away with it when it bounced. Okay, so – so here I am sitting with a nice gain, all those small shares in the beginning. And then when it bounced up, I made money. And then I'm sitting there. I'm like, okay, man, I'm going to nail DGLY next. So next thing you know, I'm in 14,000 shares of DGLY. 14,000 shares of DGLY after I did the, the offering. Once again, the offering freaking tanks the stock. It traps the long. I mean, it traps the shorts. Fucking look at DGLY, man. This is the third, second or third offering it did in 24 hours. The second offering it did in 24 hours. I'm like, this got to be over. So I'm scaling once again. I, you know, it tanks because of the offering, and then I scale up, and all of a sudden I'm in 14,000 shares of this shit. And I'm like, dude, I'm going to bank. I mean, dude, this is the second offering. This must be the top. Next you know, boom. Freaking the chat rooms get in, whatever it may be. The sucker ripped from four dollars and fifty cents to seven dollars. Right? Was it seven dollars? Four fifty to seven. Four fifty to seven. Holy crap! That's like fifty percent move. Okay. I'll, 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 there's two things to learn from this. Okay. First thing is like, dude. Even when you're holding a twenty blackjack hand, you never know. The dealer may have twenty one, and you broke, and you will go broke. Okay. I've already warned the room. The reason why I think DGLY is trapping is because in the morning, what we do is always do this, guys. So I'm going to give you a free bit of huge advice that you probably never hear from anywhere else regarding SSR. Calculate what the SSR trigger price for DGLY today is, guys. Let's do this. So I'm going to give you a, uh, some education here. So everybody, what is, what is the trigger price for SSR on DGLY? How do you calculate SSR? That's a short sell restriction rule. Basically, it says if a stock tanks more than 10% from the previous close, you cannot short it on the bid. You have to wait for an uptick. So what happens is you have to fight the trend. So in order for you to short, it has to be going up, not going down. Usually, you want to, you know, if it goes down, you want to slam the bid. You know, it makes shorting much easier. So with SSR on, with SSR on, it's very difficult to short because in order for someone to sell on the bid, they have to be long, okay? And so what happens is, you, you know, the algos can put up 10,000 shares and the stock won't move in, even though you have 100,000 sellers on the offer because they cancel them the bid. So a couple of things happen with that. We calculate it to be $4.50. So the way you do it, you take the previous close, you multiply it by 0 0.1, 0 0.9. So basically you want 90%, right, the closing price. So it comes out to $4.50. What is the low of the day, guys? What is the low of the fucking day on DGLY? Let's go through this exercise right now. Is that a coincidence? The low of the day is the exact trigger price for SSR. They slammed it down to the SSR 
to trigger the SSR so that they can trap you. Ding, 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 ding. That should be the big, big flag in your head. Okay? And I did start scaling way up there, but then 450 is $7. That second move is what got me. So I'm in 14,000 shares short of this. And miraculous, I only lost back like 2,000 bucks on it, right? 14,000 shares. So losing 2,000 bucks and 14,000 shares, I only lost like 20 cents, right? So I miraculously got out. And I was sitting there pissed off. Pissed off because I'm like, dude, I knew this shit. I knew it. I told myself, SSR, why did I get so big? Okay? So that's mistake number one. So there I'm sitting. I'm still up for the day. You know, I'm still up 2,000 bucks for the day. Pissed off that I didn't size in HTZ. Pissed off that I got trapped in, in uh, DGLY. So there I am sitting around with, I'm still up like 3,000 bucks, right? After all this stupidity crap. Playing like normal size. So with small size, I made 5,000. Then I got pissed and I started doing bigger size on DGLY. That's how I lost back 2,000. But that was still a miracle. I could have lost back $10,000 easily on that stock. And that thing went from 450 to six bucks. But somehow I stopped out and I, I did right. I posted my chart. You guys saw that? I did okay on that stock. I top, I top took the short back at seven, made some money back. So I was sitting there with, you know, still gains. Decent day of gains, man, on, on no stress. And then, HTC, and then this is what happened. One last fucking trade. One last trade. So 1030 hits. And we know that's a zombie rule, guys. Okay? This happens all the time. Okay? The zombie rule. I'm sitting there about to freaking go on my IG live at 1030. And then HTZ bounces. Of course it bounces. This is zombie rule. Then I'm like, oh, I'm going to do one last trade. One last trade before I do Instagram live. Because I'm like, I didn't make enough. I didn't make up to that. And, and this is the makeup trade. So in my head, subconsciously, I'm like, dude, HTZ bouncing. This is my makeup trade. And so I'm like, so I'm like, okay, I stick my feet into the water. Next, you know, my toes were in the water. Then my ankle and then my fucking kneecaps were underwater. And next, you know, my freaking private parts were like in the fucking shark infested waters. And so somehow I, I went from a 2,000 share short to a 25,000 share short. I had 25,000 share short of this freaking HTZ. And then I'm like pissing myself. I'm like. You gotta be the dumbest, dumbest trader in the world. Okay? I stuck one toe in, and now my penis is in the freaking <laughs> alligator's mouth. One bite, I'm done. So what do I do? I'm like, I'm just, there's a couple things I can do. Keep adding to a freaking loser, hold it, hoping it bangs, or realize, okay, man, I'm gonna do damage control and still be able to walk away. With my penis intact, but maybe lose one testicle. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's like I can still live with one testicle, but I cannot live without a penis. So at some point, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna eat the loss. So the next dip came. I ate a ten thousand dollar loss on it, and I'm sitting there like thinking I'm the dumbest trader in the world. I stuck my toe in. I could have got out for maybe five hundred to a thousand dollar loss easily. I wrote that one thousand dollar loss to a $10,000 loser, realized. So I'm sitting there thinking, I must be the dumbest trader. And you know why, guys? Because I had open orders. I was lazy to clean up. I knew there were open orders. You know what happened? I, I, I gave myself a mental out, like, okay, it, it probably won't hit. How the fuck did fucking H, uh, HTZ bounce over a dollar? It bounced a dollar 50 cents. How the hell did HTZ get saved? It was a four fucking dollar. Now the five dollars is 70 cents. It bounced like 50 percent. It broke every rule in the book. This should have went down and stayed down. But you know what, man? Shit happens in trading, guys. Every time that you go broke, there's always a black swan. But you know what, man? I'm walking around this pond. I see black swans all over the freaking place. These markets are crazy. It doesn't matter. We can call it crazy. The reason we call it crazy is because we screw up. You know, when you make money, you're like, oh, it's obvious. I read the market's fine. When you lose, it's crazy. This shit never happens. The Robin Hood guys are dumb. Why they're dumb? But you know who's dumb? I'm dumb. I lost money. Those guys, are they made money. 
You you just call him stupid all you want. But at the end of the day, dude, I lost money. I'm the dumb one. I'm the dumb money. So I ended up with 25,000 shares. I lost 10,000. So he's like, dude, I, I, I fucking held that shit for over half a point. Kept adding. So what happens is this, guys. There reaches a point where, you know what, man? I didn't plan on it bouncing that much. So I deviated from my plan. So this, this is what you got to learn from, guys. When you come in thinking you're going to bank, if everything works out, you will bank. But most of the time, it's not going to work out. And you know what? Usually the first time that you make the trade is the best time. The makeup trade is what kills you. I should just want 25,000 shares in at the beginning. I did not. And that's the problem. I'm looking for the makeup trade. And the makeup trade is the one that kills you guys. The first time you make the trade, you, you make money. Because you planned it. I planned the fucking trade. But I just was not happy with the amount of money I made. That was my own stupidity. I'm like, I did not make enough money. So the makeup trade, I'm like, I'm going to nail this. And you know what, man? This is always the case, man. The makeup trade is the one that fucking kills you. And that's what happened. But you know what, man? It hurt. It's stupid. I'm very embarrassed about it. I hate talking about it. It was an amateur fucking hour for me. I, 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 I just got to a point where I, was like, I, I became a, a frantic guy. And the only reason it stopped me, guys, from adding 50,000 shares, because I reached my max, my max fucking, um, I didn't reach my max loss, by the way. My max loss, didn't, because I had cushion. I, had, I was up like five grand on the day, right? So I had cushion. And I it, it, it reached my max loss. But what I did was I reached my max share size. One account had 10,000 shares max. And that, that account went from, yeah, that account lost five. So I had two accounts. Well, each one lost like five grand. Well, five grand back. So, so I'm down like five grand today. <clears throat> so what saved me, what saved me was the fact that I had a fence around my account that prevented me from being stupid. I swear, if I did not have that fence around my account, I have a 10,000 share max size on one account. If I didn't have that, I guarantee you I'd be all in my account. I'd be adding to the moon, dude. Would I be bailed out? Who the hell knows? I might have added really low, too. But knowing that I only had 10,000 shares on this account, I staged it. I'm like, dude, so I added every 10 cents. I'm like, what the fuck? I added every 10 cents. <laughs> and it was 25,000 shares. The stock fucking ran like $1.50 on me. So, so there you go, man. One stupid lapse of judgment. And so I, I knew I was in fucking trouble. I could have got out with a thousand dollar, you know, but I was like, no, no, I want to bank. I've already, I should have banked fucking 10,000 this morning. I'm not going to fucking take the loss. And then, you know what happened, guys? You start to convince yourself why you should stay in the trade. I convinced myself because I'm like, dude, Hertz is bankrupt. Robin Hood guys are stupid. It has to go down. And then what happens is, holy shit, I'm already down like three grand. When I was down like three grand even on a day, I could have cut my losses. I'm like, and then what happens is it, it creeps up. I'm like, but I was up 10 grand yesterday. Maybe I'm up 100 grand this fucking month. Maybe I'm up a million dollars this year. Maybe I'm up $10 million this lifetime. So you start doing the cushion game. You basically, so I wrote about this yesterday. And I am the fucking victim of my own fucking stupidity. When you start to look for reasons to hold because you're down, it means that you should get the hell out. I was looking for every reason a book to freaking hold, searching around, figuring what's going on. And then the second step is the cushion game. I'm up this week. I'm up yesterday. I, I have a paycheck coming this Friday. I have some 401k I can sell. <laughs> you, see what, you see what I'm getting at here, guys? I have a used car that I'm not using in the garage. I'll sell that. <laughs> Maybe I'll sell my body. <laughs> you know, whatever it may be. So basically, you start to make excuses on why you should be in the trade, guys. And when you see this, help your tab. Alex helped me raise the value. You do Instagram Live. I'm like, dude, this was basically 50 cents before I covered. I'm like, I will cover on the next day. The dip did every fucking came. That's the problem. 
You're like, I will cover the next dip. The dip didn't come until 70 cents later. 70 cents later, dude. It went to five dollars and seventy fucking cents. And I'm sitting there now with a ten thousand dollar loss. It tanked and I got out and I lost only five thousand dollars on the day. So I'm down five thousand dollars today, which is not I mean it's fucking stupid. For me, it's not really about the money. It's the way I the way I trade it was just so stupid. So freaking stupid. I was a pussy in the morning, didn't size up. And then when I saw a tank, I'm like, I was Captain fucking hindsight obvious. Coulda, shoulda, woulda. Went back in and got my, my ass kicked. You know? <laughs> Thank God I didn't lose a Tesco or anything. I just got really, I got really, got really close. Fucking bit my little, bit my ass a little bit. I'll, I'll survive tomorrow, you know? I, I'm, I'm completely fine now. You know, that, that, that's basically a day or two of losses. And that's not a big deal for me. Um, but you know what? It could have been much worse, guys. I wanted to highlight this. This is embarrassing as hell. You know how embarrassing it is to freaking do something like that? So I'm sitting here very embarrassed. But I'm a man. I own up to my mistakes. And I'm here to educate you. That, that's the bottom line, guys. The bottom line is that we're not perfect. If I can still make money, guys, and I am probably one of the most emotional traders out there, you guys can do it too. If I had better discipline, I might be up $20 million on my career. You know, who knows? I didn't have fucking di discipline when I was making Fannie Mae or yesterday or whatever, right? It's just, you know, when, when I make money, you know, I, I make it, but I could always do better. My emotions are the reason why I'm not, like, much better. People think I'm good, which, you know, it's all relative, right? What do you think it is? You never, I never think myself as fucking being good. I'm like, I'm okay. It's expected for me to make money. So, this is why I'm here doing these lessons for you guys. Okay? The technical stuff, we got it, man. We made a DVD. Not a DVD. I'm going to a course. We hate using that word DVD. It's not a DVD. It's a freaking seven and a half hour course, online course. Accelerate. All the strategies are in there. Everything we can teach you is in there. The thing I cannot teach you is something I cannot teach myself, which is the discipline. The discipline to take the loss. It, it's, it's a funny thing, guys. Check this out. So, so when I'm trading well, I am okay with taking losses. I show the members all the time. I take stop losses. It's when I, it's when I screw up, when I deviate. When I deviate, all this crap happens. Okay? And this is, this is why, guys, you must, you must put a fence around your trading. Because all it takes is one stupidity, one stupid act. You, you imagine? I'm all in on Hertz, all in on DGLY at the bottom. I'd be dead. It happens, man. It happens. And so we cannot teach you discipline. That's where the chat room comes in. That's where having a tab comes in. Because in the chat room, I'm hearing people post and stuff. And then when I go quiet sometimes, people know I'm fucking stuck. You know? <laughs> it's very obvious, the trend, right? And so when, when Alex doesn't hear from me, he knows, like, what the fuck are you doing, Val? And, and so today, I write it off as a, you know, a mental mistake. I learn from it. I own from the mistakes. You know, it's not destructive. It's, 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 you know, I'll make it back tomorrow. But it's not that problem. The problem is not the money. I'm telling you right now. The problem is the mindset. A lot of traders, what they do is when they lose, they start to second guess and doubt themselves. And so it's very difficult for them to come back from a big loss. They, they, go, they will doubt what they do. They'll second guess. They'll cancel their stops. They'll get out early. Things like that. So the reason, so basically we call that mental capital. Mental capital is sometimes more important than financial capital. You know, once you lose your, your, your confidence, it's, it's very difficult sometimes to get it back. And, that's, and the first step you do is get back on the porch, get back on the process. So I'm okay. I know what my losses are. You know, I'm able to walk away and eat that loss. But this is the thing you learned today, guys. SSR. You never going to hear it from anywhere else. You know, we, we, um, we always calculate this and we post it in the room to $4.50, man. It was on the dot. On the dot. Something creepy about that, right, guys? So, all right. What I'd like to do is, uh, would you like to ask a question or we, you want to end it here? I'll, I'll leave it to you guys. Should we end it or we should? What do you think, Alex? I hope you guys learned something today. Someone want to come on and uh, 
be on this. I'm gonna bring in a random person. Whoever wants to get on, I'll do one, one person. We have time for one person to split screen. That might be kind of cool. So raise your hand if you want to get on the split screen. Yeah, man, I talk about this mental mindset all the time because you know this, we can teach you all the strategies, all this stuff. But at the end of the day, it's you, the trader, who needs to execute and be disciplined. All right. I'm going to go someone I've never seen the name. Don, Don of me. This is a completely random individual I've never seen name, so. <clears throat> oh, waiting for Don. Okay, I guess we'll we'll do Connor. I will go live with Connor. Raise your hand by just doing the emoji. <laughs> hey, what's up, what's Connor? Up, what's up, Al? How you doing, man? I'm doing good. How about yourself? Good. So tell us, tell everybody who you are and all that good stuff. The first time so we I, ever talk, so. <laughs> all right, I'm Connor Albrecht, and I'm from Austin, Texas. Are you in MIC or how long have you been trading and all that good stuff? I am actually not in MIC. However, I follow you and Alex. I've been following y'all for the last, I guess, five years since sophomore year, year of college. And oh, wow. You started young. <laughs> That's good. Right. So, uh, which I probably should have joined MIC because I probably wouldn't have take, taken me five years to, uh, I guess, get to this point. Great, man. It's good to meet you. So, what's going on? Uh, what do you guys, what do you trade and what, what, what do you want to talk about? So I'm, I'll actually, leave I'm currently, so in college, I traded all junior and, and uh, senior year. So I'd trade every single day. Um, however, once I graduated from college in engineering, I became a petroleum engineer and started doing oil and gas, oil and gas stuff. However, with um, the market every or with coronavirus going on, I've been working remote the last three months. So I, I, sh I guess I decided to come back to stock trading and tried to uh, give it a, give it a go again to potentially maybe make myself a full-time trader and kind of see see where it goes from there. Yeah, my advice to you is this, dude. Keep your job because being a full-time trader does not mean trading all the time. As you right, know, so I should I, I, I should have stopped. I yeah. really saw my job, however, I've been full-time trading <laughs> <laughs> along with my job, so I'll wake up in the morning and send out some stuff for my job, but I'm mainly just been watching watching the stock market but i've i've been calling it a day i call it every morning from 8 30 to 10 a.m kind of how alex does it i walk away in college i would stick around all day and that's when i notice most of my most of my losses so i've actually on my sixth green day in a row um, nice and just that's going going from there but i've been trading with interactive brokers and it's kind of nice because i can kind of see which stocks are hard to borrow so y'all are trading htz Actually pulled it up. I was pulling it up while you're talking about it and seeing how how it got squeezed because it was a hard to borrow. I feel like a lot of the ones that are hard to borrow, those are the ones that probably could could potentially squeeze the most because that's where the most shorters are. Let me. Uh, but, so so are you mostly long or short? No, all sh all short. I've been short so the last six days all in right. a row. I've so just, let me I've give you a, let me give uh, let, 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 me, let, let me give you some advice. Let me give you some advice. Uh, first of all, interactive brokers is not the broker you want to be. You want to go with Cobra. Yes, I, I yes, I actually asked you about that. So I had so what I was nervous of uh, I had I think twenty six thousand in my account now. I've grown it to like thirty thirty five thousand in the last six days. So I Ooh, wanted to make nice. sure I had it I wanted to make sure I had it enough. Um, Correct. Cobra I think's thirty thousand. So I didn't want to wire everything to Cobra with thirty two grand, make one or two losses and be like, shoot, now now I'm already under thirty thousand pattern day trader. For, no, no, so. the pattern day trader hits at twenty five. The okay. thirty, the thirty is to open just so, so that you have a leeway. But okay. once you once you're open, you're good. So so well, this is what we do, man. Call up Cobra. Tell him that. Yeah, I actually you... called him. Uh, one of the guys called me from Plano, and uh, he he sent me the form over and everything. So once I hit, I think once I maybe I'll do it at the end of this week. If I once I hit like thirty five thousand, I'll try wire everything over. I just wanted sure. to make sure I had enough before I wire everything over, make a couple of losses or something were to happen, and then I'd go right. under. 
So I wanted to make sure I had some, at least a little cushion before I make the jump. So what you do is you tell them like I referred you and then they'll give you the best commission and a cheaper commission. So we have a, we have a uh, discount for MIC members. So no, I heard y'all yeah, yeah. have a 25% discount on if you join Cobra Trading. Correct. So that's and what it, I'll... Yep. Yep. And anybody that's over pattern day trade should definitely join Cobra. Cause uh, dude, I get free shares all the time. So when you're talking about HGZ is easy to, it's hard to borrow. And uh, Cobra was giving it out for like, dude, it was like two mils, which, which is basically, I think I paid fifty dollars for ten thousand shares or something like that. Okay, okay ten thousand shares. So, so it's That's like, awesome. so eight, yeah, eight. So what? So you you got actually backwards. So if a stock is easy to borrow, meaning there's a lot of shorts, it tends to squeeze more. Even more. The, it, the, because what happens is this: the more shorts are in, the more natural bidders there are. Because right. the shorts need to cover, so they themselves become the natural bidders, and that's how HTZ squeezed like that. That's right. how DGLY, DGLY was free. I got ten thousand shares right. free. But you can see there was hard to borrow. There was no it was like on interactive brokers. There's no locates. In, 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 in interactive brokers is always hard to borrow. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I, yeah, today, today, I, today I traded. So a lot of the oil and gas stocks went are crazy. <laughs> Um, I typically yeah. try to stay away from oil and gas stocks, but like Chesapeake was went down fifty percent overnight. QEP resources, I mean, all of these are rigged. All those are, of, yep. But I try. I typically try to stay, but all of them were yeah, crashing. So I ended up. Yep. Yeah, but. So when you traded. switch over, man, you, you, you know, when you switch over, you see a huge difference, bro. Because uh, yeah. we all started. I, I had an you know, broker. I had all that stuff, and uh, you'd be like, "Holy crap! This is like a whole new world." Yeah, that's those, what I, I've, I've always, even in college, I was just like, man, I, there's a reason, you know, all these guys that day trade for a living are trading these. It's like, it's got, because then a lot of yeah, if you don't, because have, uh, they're, they're, they're not really, if you don't have the locates, you end up making trades you shouldn't because you can't find, you can't, you end up trading something that's not as a good of setup because you can't find the locates on certain stocks. So it's, correct. I think exactly it's pretty right, important man. to, uh, yeah, be able to have the, the options to do that because, yeah, there's, Great, great setups that I can't ever, can't ever trade because because of that. But yeah, so I mean, this is good that we spoke. So yes, I, 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 I definitely ever... plan on I definitely plan on uh, moving over in the next yeah like the next week by next week I was gonna plan on wiring as long as I keep keep going green hit thirty five thousand I'm gonna wire wire everything over. See and, the uh, thing is, you're 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 doing great by yourself, and I I really think this is not a, this is not for me to sell in my or anything because I'm not gonna make any. Two hundred dollars not going to change my life, right? So, yeah, I, I really think that you know you you have the skill, and people think, oh, I make money now, but it's kind of like okay, I'm a good golfer. Right. If you want to go pro, you should take lessons from a pro. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know I, what I'm I agree. I followed. I've I've been following you guys and a lot of other guys for for years, and I've watched probably over a thousand hours of videos to I guess kind of get to this point. But it's kind of the kind of uh, it's like is you know six day win streak isn't enough it i mean i don't even think a month month long win streak in this market is is enough to uh make make the jump to a full time trader so it's just kind of finding the medium of how I my my advice that. is this man cuz you you're like me i was a, i was an engineer too so what what happens is you're trading really well right now cuz you have a source of income the moment you don't have a source of income <laughs> <laughs> and you're and you're like pressured to make money to pay the rent that's right. what should happen. So yeah, that's, so I always, it's I been always nice right it. now. So hopefully, yeah, it's working at working remote. It's definitely given me the uh, the option to kind of dive into it more and actually take it more serious. In college, I was just holding holding short stock on a cruise ship overnight on a spring break cruise, and now <laughs> now I'm able to uh, actually take it serious right. and wake up. So and do this is beautiful time because during the quarantine is a time to educate, in my opinion. Join for right, a month and see how it is. You see what I'm saying? This is the only time you get the chance to join. And that's why a lot of people right. join right now, just to learn, right? And and so so what happens is, you know, you use this time to educate yourself. And then you just realize, holy crap, I'm a good trader. But I could be an even better trader if I knew these things. And, and, and it's all about – this is what people, people don't understand. Education for trading is not necessarily to learn new things. It's basically to learn from my mistakes, from mine right. and Alex's mistakes. Like, we, we made a ton of mistakes which led us to come up with a zombie rule, things like that, right? Right. 
Uh, do you yeah, use so car stops? Do yeah. you follow? Do both you and Alex follow the y'all are both? All, I know y'all always are live streaming at eleven a.m. or I guess market time eleven a.m. We we are, always, we are in there every day, bro. We so you're done. So you're done. You're done every day by ten a.m. or I guess eleven a.m. New York time. Well, I I stick around because I educate people. Right. But I stick around all day to help the room and educate because right. you know there, there's still opportunities to trade. It's so that the danger part is sticking around is their discipline, right? If yes. you're a very disciplined individual. And you say you don't want to drink, and you go to a bar, you don't have to drink. But I, I you know, some people are not disciplined. If they go to a bar, right. they have to drink. <laughs> so right. it's best not to go into a bar, right? <laughs> right. So that's so the same thing. Yeah, yeah. I guess so depends I, what, but depending on what your, I guess, trading strategy is, if you're, you know, going long around 11 to 2 p.m. when everything there, zombie, there, zombie there times, I guess. A, it's, there's a lot of money to be made if you're disciplined. The point is be disciplined, right? And that's the thing. So right. a lot of these stocks will hit the outer lines, we call it. And when, when you have the patience to wait for the hour line to short, it's money. But right. that's the problem. I, I was very early on HTZ because I was FOMO. I went in a bank, bank, bank. What, what was your uh, what was your entry versus your or what was your resistance on uh, HTZ? Dude, I that's the thing. I came with no plan. It was like one last trade before the IG live, and and it ballooned from like let me see what my average was. Man, my average was looks like five, it opened five, like five eighteen was my average. 518 was your average getting in. So what do you, what do you usually use as your first red day? What do you typically use as your resistance? The the uh, the uh, the problem the open, problem with the, the stock price? the, the, the problem the, the thing is I scored that thing very well. I I posted it in the chat room. I forget, but I, I was actually I top picked it in the pre market, and then but the problem with that is, dude, the first red day doesn't mean shit when when the fucking VWAP gets reclaimed and it goes way back up, and that's right. what happened, right? And so we have things called the VWAP reclaim. Uh, which is basically a rule that once the VWAP gets reclaimed, you got to be freaking careful because now the the shorts are underwater. The longs right. have recovered, right? So there's a lot of these things that that you you will eventually learn, but it may take you a long time and a lot of money. So we don't want you to do that. That's why we keep telling everybody like, dude, you don't have to be, you don't have to be a bad trader to freaking get education. Education right. is for everybody because you know what, man? You're going to reach a point where, like uh, I don't know what you don't know what you don't know, right? That's the thing. Right. Until someone tells you, like, you're like, holy shit, I never knew about this. Right. Like pivot lines, right? Before we, I, before I told everybody about pivot lines, they're like, what the hell is a pivot line? You know, this it's not obvious. But when we tell you, it's very obvious. Like the zombie rule is obvious. V, uh, yeah. The SSR, where I talked about the four dollar fifty cents on DGLY, that was very obvious. Right. Like, holy shit! Right? It's like, it's you trade. Weird. You trade. Make trades in pre-market often, or typically you try to wait till uh, open. I I always trade pre-market some. So if my my whole rule is this: if there's enough volume, and it hits my lines, I will trade it. it doesn't matter right. what time it is. Yeah, it seems. Yeah, it seems like a lot of the uh, pre-market's been a, a lot higher than the opens. Like on HTZ, I think as a pre-market high was like six thirty-one. Yeah, I got in that at five dollars and forty-seven cents. Yeah, and uh, that—that's the problem. I didn't get enough size, and I covered early, and then, then the, that's that's how I I screwed up. I was a makeup trade, and that's right. how it happened. So, cool, brother. I hope to awesome. see you in. And, hey guys, text Tosh. We have a promo running, so you know we'll give some deals for everybody that's listening today. So I wanted to keep this short. Thanks, Connor, man. All right, really peace. Appreciate it. Take care. We'll see you online, brother. Yeah, see you Thanks, long. Man. Bye, guys. Have a good day. I'm gonna end up. See you guys in the chat room.